My name is Christine Laguerre. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Texas at Austin. I study how children learn and how to improve science education. Today, I'll talk to you about the development of intellectual humility. So there are these two competing drives that we really have to understand in order to study cognition. On the one hand, we are driven towards confirmation bias, towards seeking out information that's consistent with our beliefs. But on the other hand, we're motivated towards discovery, to acquiring new information about the world around us. And in this quote from Carl Sagan, he discusses this tension. It seems to me what is called for is an exquisite balance between two conflicting needs. The most skeptical scrutiny of all hypotheses that are served up to us, and at the same time, a great openness to new ideas. Now those two modes of thought are in some tension, but if you are only able to exercise one of these modes, whichever one it is, you're in deep trouble. If you are only skeptical, then no new ideas make it through to you. On the other hand, if you are open to the point of gullibility and have not an ounce of skeptical sense in you, then you cannot distinguish the useful ideas from the worthless ones. So what you see here is that really the most effective way to learn is to balance between these two drives, confirmation bias on one hand and discovery on the other. So what I'll talk to you about today is how children navigate this and how this is relevant to both science education and the development of intellectual humility. Now, what is intellectual humility? A lot of different ways that you could define this. The way that I've studied it is as a state of openness to new ideas. Right? This is highly relevant to discovery of new information. It's about being receptive to new information. And most crucially, it's about the willingness to revise beliefs in the face of inconsistent evidence. So true intellectual humility requires the ability to modify and revise things that you at one point thought were true. Now, how does intellectual humility develop? And how might we take the insights from research on cognitive development and how children learn and apply them towards understanding how to better develop and educate children about intellectual humility. Now, studying scientific reasoning in childhood provides insight into the development of intellectual humility. In order to improve children's capacity to discover new information and revise beliefs, we need to understand how children learn, how they generate explanations, and how they revise their beliefs when faced with new information. Like adults, Children have competing drives towards confirmation bias and discovery. And I would argue that you need both of those drives in order to most effectively acquire new information. Now, how do we encourage discovery and openness to revising inaccurate beliefs? And how do children integrate new information with beliefs that they already have? Well, we know that a fundamental task for all humans including young humans, is explaining why things happen. I think that explanation is a crucial feature of the development of scientific reasoning, and it's how we acquire and construct new ways of knowing. It's actually a very large and sophisticated literature on the development of causal reasoning that I think is highly relevant to understanding the development of intellectual humility. So for example, we know that young children understand a great many abstract causal principles and have remarkably sophisticated causal knowledge. They can generate accurate explanations, they can engage in effective interventions, and they can make accurate predictions. So children have a lot of causal information. And not only that, they're deeply interested in understanding causality. They actively seek out that information in the world around them. 